Christio hi Cymru and welcome to Wales. Now me and Buddy are walking along the lower regions of the Berwyn mountain range. Now the Berwyns are just on the other side of the Shropshire border. Once you head into Powys and you go west, you probably cross it. Many of you that go to Barmouth uh, through the Barrow Road, you will literally go over the Berwyns itself. It's a very vast, big sort of mountainous hilly landscape. It's covered in grassland, very wet, lots of streams, lakes and waterfalls. Unlike Areri, its mountains may not be as well defined, but it's still beautiful and still has many stunning landscapes and places to go adventuring as it were. But like Areri, the Berwins is steep in history. People have settled here way beyond the Celts and their history, culture and stories are very much entwined upon the land. You'll find castles here, stone circles, as well as stories. And one of the stories I'm going to tell you today is about the last some island that settled here around about the 7th and 8th century and took on a Welsh prince and his hunting party. Now the prince this lady took on was called Brochwell and he was the leader of the men of Powys. Now the men of Powys were a very warlike sort of people. They had to compete with rival states because Powys was sandwiched in between Mercia, a Saxon kingdom in England, and Gwynedd, another state in the mountains of Areri, Snowdonia. And even when they weren't warring against rival states, there was political divisions within the kingdoms. Powys was no different. Brockwell had to compete against cousins and brothers, and there were many civil wars within these regions, just like every other state in Britain at the time. People just didn't get along. But when they did get along, they hunted. Hunting was a way of leisure for most men. It was a great way to show off your authority, your skill at hunting, killing, and leading. And this land where we're walking in today was their hunting ground. And it would have been very similar to what it is today different trees mind you they would have been very much covered in oak rowan and the natural trees of britain Now within this hunting ground and this heavily forestry terrain, it was seen as a sanctuary by this young lady. Now, the story goes is that this young lass was a daughter of an Irish king. Now, Ireland, much like Britain, was heavily divided. You've all heard of the four provinces, Leinster, Munster, Connacht and Ulster. Way, way back there, there were more regions that were warring against each other. And what was quite common practice was to use your daughter as a bargaining chip with another lord join the families together and hopefully bring peace to those two regions. Powers did the same to Gwyneth and Mercia probably did the same with Wessex. They're using daughters and sons as bargaining chips. Let's be honest, many of the daughters. Now, understandably, this young lady did not like the prospect of being essentially sold like cattle, but it was wanted and she had no choice. Women didn't really have much choice back then, as you can imagine. So what she decided to do was run and she ran as far as she come and she came here to Powys. Now I don't know why she did. It could have been many different reasons. Now Wales at the time was heavily Christian. She might have related or found a bit more sympathy with the priests around here. I do not know. But what we do know is that she came around this region and she lived here for a number of months before the encounter with the prince. Now this is where the story gets quite dramatic. One day, this young lady was resting in her camp and she was woken by the sounds of dogs, hounds and men. And she was quite right to be alarmed. Because at the time, horns, the cries of men and hounds, that could have easily been a warring party rather than a hunt. So she hid in the brush to avoid being captured as a slave or worse. But as she hid in the darkness of the trees, something within her soul could not allow her to watch this young hare being ripped apart by these dogs. So, something came over her and she ran out of the brush, grabbed the hare out of the teeth of the hounds and screamed at the prince and his men to back off. 
but she was only greeted with laughter and mockery. And after the prince had enough of laughing, he ordered his men and the hounds to rip the hair out of the arms of this young lady. But as the hounds approached this tired, worn lass, a sense of calm came over them and he sat next to her. And as the men approached, them too became bewitched by this sort of supernatural element that took over their bloodlust. The prince too became quite overwhelmed by this. Now once all the bloodlust left the prince, the hounds, as well as his company nobles, the prince ordered his companions to back off so he alone could find out who this lass is. Now quite widely, this young lady was cautious. This man was a prince. He had soldiers at his call and he could do whatever he wanted to her within these forests and no one would find out. But this prince had no ill intentions. He wanted to know about her, her history, her ideology, her religion, who she was. And as they were talking over the weeks and the months to come, he started to trust her and her too started to trust him. And this prince offed her land in the valleys just over here, near a region which is called Clan Gunnog. And he gave her land as well as a chapel to build so she could serve him and his family and people until the day she dies. Now this was an offer and a half. She was offered protection under a powerful prince in a region untouched by war. So over the years, she served this prince and his house. She became a master of herbal healing and was surrounded by her beloved animals. The place is still visible by today. The church is still there, built on a pagan holy site, and the surrounding landscape is just dramatic as the story itself. But here today, you can follow in her footsteps. Right here. Her name was Menengeth. If I am saying that right, she was an Irish princess who became an abbess for a powerful Welsh prince and lived the rest of her days in peace and sanctuary with the animals that she loved dear. And in Welsh mythology, she is a patient saint of animals. Lovely story. But unfortunately, I can imagine this story is a very misty glow from what the reality must have been. It's very much romanticized, I can imagine. But nonetheless, this land still echoes its stories from the ruins and the buildings of the church that she built and she served from to the paths and the hills that we walk in today. Our history and our lives are entwined with the land that we live in. Be it your English, Welsh, Scottish, Irish, or wherever else in the world you come from, if you live here, you become a part of his story. And one thing to do is to allow the stories before you continue. Safe travel from Wales.